Ladies and gentlemen, there is devastating news for the Las Vegas Raiders as one of their star wide receivers enters concussion protocol. But could this have been avoided? Did Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos do some dirty things in this game? Do we have Bounty Gate 2.0 on our hands? We're going to break this down and who the Raiders could possibly use in this upcoming game against the Bills. And we're going to take a look at some of this dirty play in this past game. Remember to like and subscribe for more Raiders content. So the Las Vegas Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels just announced right now that wide receiver, the former New England Patriot, Jacoby Myers, will be placed in concussion protocol. We don't have any update on Jacoby. He's in the protocol, so, I mean, that that's all I can say about that. And this is devastating news because he had such an amazing game against the Denver Broncos. He had 10 targets for 9 receptions, 81 yards and 2 passing touchdowns. Jimmy Garoppolo was clicking with this guy, and it just seemed like whenever he needed a play, whenever he needed a first down, he was looking Jacoby Myers' way. And this is the play that sent him into concussion protocol. And many people are saying that maybe this defender should be suspended. And were the Denver Broncos targeting some Raiders players? We have some other players we're going to show you in just a little bit. But right here, it's a catch over the middle of the field. And you can see this Broncos player lower his shoulder and go straight for the head rather than attacking the body. Boom. And it just knocks Jacoby Myers completely out. And it was a scary sight, mainly because Jacoby Myers was just sitting there. I think he was trying to be a professional and be smart and not move his head. Thankfully, after the game, you had people in the locker room like Devontae Adams say that Jacoby Myers was walking around and hanging out and seemed fine after the game. But regardless, he's going to be placed in concussion protocol. And I think a dirty hit like this could have easily been avoided. Perhaps this defender should have gone lower. I know it's a violent physical game, but now you got a player who the Raiders have invested a lot in and who was just out there trying to make some plays. Now you have this guy not available just because of this style of play and we have some other things that we're going to show you where maybe that might have been the goal all along was to play a little nasty for the Denver Bronco. We saw Jimmy Garoppolo on the run a couple of times and here's the thing that happened. This defender right here knew that Jimmy Garoppolo was already down at this moment. Look, his knee's basically down. This defender already has him down. Frank Clark, I believe, is right here. And then right here, this defender, boom, goes straight in for him afterwards Jimmy G ends up grabbing his head. He has to come out for a play. We, we know he went in the tent. He got evaluated. He was fine. He ended up going back out. But I just thought this could have easily been avoided. And I thought it was another example of, you know, a Denver Broncos player, I think knowing better. And, and I think knowing like, hey, if the guy's already down, maybe I shouldn't run over here and then attack him and pretty much like land close on his head. I mean, it really did have a big impact on Jimmy G there. You see mainly the leg sort of hits the head. Thankfully, this guy at least tried to avoid direct contact with his head, but it really messed him up. And it, it made me think like, hey, are these people just sort of being a little loose with the rules here? We know Sean Payton history. We'll get into that in a little bit. You know, what's going on here? And look, we all know Jimmy Garoppolo had surgery on his left foot. And I think uh, maybe the Denver Broncos knew that as well. We showed this play the other day and we have this doctor, pro football doc talking about it. You could just see them man, landing on his foot like that. Uh, you know, perhaps it was a mistake. You saw this defender already engaged with Jimmy Garoppolo. This is after he already threw the ball away. And then you have another defender coming in and landing directly on that left foot. I think that was just a scary sight to see. You can see instantly Jimmy G's in pain. Thankfully, man, shout out to Jimmy Garoppolo. Freaking tough throughout this game. You knew he had surgery on that left foot. You knew he took the shot to the head in the beginning of the game when he went to concussion protocol. He was still able to tough it out, play the entire game, make some critical plays for the Raiders to win this game narrowly. I mean, it wasn't a pretty game. 17 points, right? Uh, only winning by one point. But man, I just felt like the Broncos were playing sketchy here, especially given Sean Payton's hit history. I hate to say it. And he, and he had a lot of fans online. You got this guy saying NFL should investigate Sean Payton for Bounty Gate again. This is ridiculous. We knew this was a thing. The Bounty Gate program in 2009 to 2011 for the New Orleans Saints while Sean Payton was there. This is where they paid players extra bonuses to target certain other players on their other team and try to injure them and try to take them out of the game. This is a famous story that all of us know about. And Sean Payton was disciplined for this. You know, people try to pin it all on, you know, Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, but Sean Payton was involved and was disciplined by the NFL. At the end of the day, the NFL disciplined him because they found him culpable and Sean Payton was suspended for one year without pay after this. It's absolutely insane that this happened. And then he had Greg Williams, who also was suspended indefinitely. He was the defensive coordinator behind this. Benson family also faced some punishments for this. We know that Gail Benson's now the owner of the team and they had to 
pay a half a million dollar fine and forfeit their second round picks for 2012 and 2013. Now look, dude, I'm not saying that this is for sure happening. I don't know. I'm just like you guys. All I did is just watch the game and just see some sketchy things happen. And I know the history of this head coach, and I think the NFL should monitor this if this continues to happen to other teams. You got to try to make the game safer. That's what we're all saying, right? At the end of the day, Jacoby Myers, the wide receiver of the Raiders, will have to go through concussion protocol. It's an open question whether or not he'll end up playing this Sunday against the Buffalo Bills. We'll get into what other receivers Jimmy Garoppolo could end up targeting besides Jacoby Myers if Myers is not available, other than Devontae Adams, of course. So Myers is going to have to go through a couple stages of concussion protocol. He's supposed to rest during this period limit anything that could aggravate his symptoms. He's supposed to not engage in much activity while he has symptoms. And, th and then he could start easing in aerobics and they'll test out his balance testing to see if he's able to move to the last phase of concussion protocol. So basically, every team has an independent neurological consultant. They're going to be able to determine whether or not Jacoby Myers has symptoms. And if he's symptom free for a while, he could start engaging in throwing and catching and running activities specific to his position. So hopefully he's able to pass these tests not have any symptoms and be able to do this fourth phase before this upcoming game. And as you can see, Devontae Adams only had 66 yards with six receptions, zero touchdowns. So he was, you know, covered a lot. Obviously, if you're the Broncos, you're going to pay attention to Devontae. And it really opened up Jacoby Myers. The big thing for me and the key thing that I noticed was that Hunter Renfro had zero targets in this game. And you have here a writer for Just Blog Baby Keith saying that today was the first game in Hunter Renfro's NFL career he was catchless in a game. So whenever he's healthy, he gets a catch. And it's also the first time that he wasn't even targeted in the game. Zero passes were thrown his way. So you have to go all the way back to his time at Clemson in 2015 to find a time when he had zero catches. And keep in mind, the rookie Trey Tucker was not activated in this game. The Raiders still elected to go with DeAndre Carter, who only had one target for one reception for five yards. And then outside of that, there was really nobody involved in the passing game at all. Josh Josh Jacobs had a couple checkdowns. Austin Hooper had one big catch for 20 yards. But the Raiders definitely need answers at the wide receiver position. Definitely need to try to get Hunter Renfro more involved in the game, especially if Jacoby Myers is not going to be available. And they could quite possibly activate Trey Tucker if Hunter Renfro does not appear to be involved in their plans. We know there's been all this weird stuff about Hunter Renfro. People wondering if he's on the block. And him getting no targets just shows, hey, this could be a possibility that the Raiders move on from this guy. The Raiders are facing the Buffalo Bills and they will be on the road at 10 a.m. Pacific time. This is going to be an intense matchup and hopefully they can keep the momentum going. Jimmy Garoppolo could get more people involved in the passing game. Jimmy G really only had 200 yards passing and the Raiders were not that effective running the football, but it was a short game with not that many possessions. Hopefully they can capitalize off the momentum of just winning and carry that into Buffalo. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We will be live during that game. Bills versus Raiders, 10 a.m. Pacific time on Sunday on this channel so make sure you set your reminder so you do not miss it my name is wi-fi willie peace out and i hope you have a good one